Hi everyone, welcome to the health tip this week. So today we're going to give you the summary of what happened on the five day water fast. So uh, myself and Janice, the assistant at the office, we actually did it. We pushed ourselves. There's a couple of people in the office that were considering it. One I told not to just based on her health history. But if somebody's in fairly good general health and that kind of thing, and you can kind of know you could probably do this okay. But it is a challenge. Definitely it was a challenge. It was a challenge for me and I wasn't sure I was going to be able to do it. And there was actually um, Dr. Pompa, one of my mentors in the True Cellular Detox program, he actually set up a web page specifically for this and they had I think over 1,800 participants, something like that. And day by day he was putting out a video, this is what you might feel today, this is what you might feel like tomorrow and giving people the, the, the science and the history. So I'm going to kind of summarize a bit of that, what we felt, what I felt. Um, so just to give you an idea, I've done like one day fast and that's about as far as I've ever done, like you know, dinner to dinner sort of thing. Regular, I do intermittent fasting and the video for that I'll put it down here again. Because somebody asked me, I, I mentioned you should just do intermittent fasting and they said, oh I don't know what that is and I said, well the video was below, uh, last week's help tip. I had, it, I had like three or four videos and one of them was me talking about intermittent fasting. So I'll put that below this video again if you want to understand what intermittent fasting is because that's what I'm doing now uh, for complete this again. So, we did five days, water only. No supplements, no nutritionals, no tea, no coffee, no nothing, just water. So some people say, oh my God, I'm gonna die without food, you know, and you kind of go through that thought. It's a really kind of interesting uh, mental challenge for sure. So these are a couple of different things. So just some of the benefits of why somebody will want to do this. Basically every religion, if you think about it, has it kind of built into their, uh, their sort of structure that they, there's fast built into it kind of thing. And pretty much all the religions have these periods of time where you're not supposed to be eating or drinking or time periods or times of the year, that kind of thing. And they just know it's a good time to kind of just rest your body <laughs> because, uh, you know, and, and if you go back ancestors, you know, food wasn't available. They didn't have fridges and there wasn't like, you know, food of air, fast food everywhere. You, can, you can't get away from it now. It's everywhere. But in the old days, you have to, if you had to go hunt for it or look for it or forage or whatever, days, weeks, <laughs> could be lots of time in your life that you weren't even eating, right? So the body kind of, it would use that time to repair itself and all these kind of things, but now we just keep hammering food in. And I remember a long time ago, way back in high school, I think I read a book called Fit for Life, and I'm pretty sure it was in that book, they said that digestion takes more energy than any other process in the body. Because you think about it, like just like taking, I don't know, like a Subway sandwich or whatever you're going to be eating, like to break that thing down to make your eyeball tomorrow or some hair or you know some skin cells that whole process just think about how, how much energy that would take to do that whole thing it's a lot so when you don't eat all of that energy that would have been going there every day you now you know normally we should in the old days we we're eating three meals a day and mom said don't snack before dinner because it's you know you're going to ruin your dinner but now we're snacking all day and they're telling us to eat six or seven times a day all the time and all this kind of thing. So just think you're always bombarding your system with this energy laden thing to break that stuff down. So now all of that energy all of a sudden what's it available for? Your body's going to go find stuff to heal, right? So a lot of times when people are doing the network care here, I talk about these, we call them retracing events where after the people's bodies are more efficient and they're working better, they might have old injuries come up and start to bug them even though they didn't hurt themselves because the body has more available energy and it goes to look for things that it didn't heal. That happened to me during this fast actually and I'll explain it. So um, some of the benefits, once again, of fasting. So um, uh, it just gives your digestive system a break. It actually helps to starve down all the bacteria inside your intestine. So we have good, bad, and opportunistic bacteria and viruses and fungi and all sorts of stuff in our intestines. And we just kind of starve them all out. So then it's important at the end to kind of re-inoculate. And I said, I'll, I'll explain what I used to do that at the end. But um, so that's important. So you just give your gut a rest, you give your, your everything arrest basically your whole body your whole system um, and some of the other things is one of the big things is called something called autophagy and it happens during intermittent fast but when you do it this long it's really a good way to your body to do a big cleanup so your body's made up of billions of cells and sometimes the cells can be a little broken down worn down not working so good sort of like the clunkers on the road and this is just a good way that your body looks at all those guys and it breaks them all down he reuses the pieces gets rid of the pieces that don't work reuses them and the most important part is the mitochondria which are the little energy packets for your cells they start to get replenished and reworked the old ones that need to die off die off your body will make new ones and all that kind of stuff so basically all of your cells are getting a good work over a good makeup over and they're replenishing everything so you're getting all the crap out of the system and you're just leaving all the good stuff basically 
and uh, like a lot of you know precancerous cells and all those kind of things. You, you don't give them any food. You don't give them any fuel source. They're very weak, and they can just break up and die. And then there you go. You're cleaning out your body, and you're kind of giving your body a break, and maybe preventing some excessive growth that you don't want to be happening in your body. Um, stem cells, usually around the fifth day of this, the stem cells are these cells that can be kind of become anything sort of thing. And uh, they can uh, help your white blood cells, which are your immune system. Your body can kind of, the immune system white blood cells are sort of like fresh. And uh, a lot of people may have like a lot of like digestive things and uh, a lot of allergies and immune problems and their body kind of get, getting out of control with their immune system. A lot of those times those cells can be brought back, be, we call them naive. So they're just kind of saying, oh, I'm not going to overreact to anything. It's just if something's there, I'll react to it. And that's a really good way to kind of help autoimmune problems and these kind of things like fibromyalgia, rheumatic problems, and all those kind of stuff. Uh, some of the other things is it helps to reset your DNA inside your body. So a lot of times our DNA, our, this, our body's just kind of exposed to stress, environmental toxins, a lot of junk coming into our system, and our DNA is kind of set up to kind of handle that. But you take all of that out of the system, all of a sudden the DNA is resetting itself to be more natural and normal the way it should be. Uh, so the healing energy I talked about, and there's something called ketones, which I talk about in the intermittent fasting video, I think, too. So your body cells can either use glucose, and almost everybody's cells are all using glucose right now as the main fuel source, because you go two hours and you're hungry, that means you're using glu glucose. And your body really hasn't adapted to making fat a fuel source. But our hunter-gatherer, ancient tribes and these kind of things, you know, they might feast a day a week and then they might go days without eating. So their body switched right over to fat and they can run for hours chasing, you know, chasing the prey or whatever they need to do or, or nomads walking to the next area where there might be food that they could forage for and that kind of thing. So these ketones are very, very healing and they actually help decrease inflammation in your cells and in your body and they help to heal your brain. Ketones are Ketogenic diets have been used to kind of what we call heal the brain. So a lot of people with dementias, Alzheimer's, neurodegenerative diseases, those kind of things, they all have a, when they do a ketogenic shifting in their um, eating patterns, that helps the healing of the brain and especially it's been used for epilepsy for many, many decades actually. So <clears throat> these are some of the results that happen with us. So uh, I just put down like the titles, you know, hunger, tired, sore, headaches, cramps, sleeping problems, weight and ketones and glucose. So uh, basically what you want to see happening is that you would like to see the, the glucose levels in your blood dropping and the ketones starting to come up. So that means you're, you're not eating anything, so your glucose will naturally go down. Your body will always maintain a certain level, but if your ketones start going up, that means your cells are switching over to burn fat as your fuel source. And just so everyone knows, I'm going to be totally transparent, you know, since Halloween to, you know, the holiday season, it was a pretty bad time for me. I was preparing treats, and even though I tried to do the ketogenic kind of treats, you know, with uh, nut flour and using only the monk fruit, you know, all those kind of things, I was still trying to make Rice crispy squares, and, you know, even though I'm using, like, a sprouted bean uh, rice and sprouted rice and that kind of stuff, I still had to put the marshmallows, the health, marshmallows from the health food stuff, but there's still sugar and all that kind of stuff, and chocolates were around, and we had to go to relatives, and just like everyone else, and, you know, the holidays, popcorn and chips and all that kind of stuff. So, over the last year, I think I've gained seven pounds, actually, which is kind of rare for me. And, uh, and some visceral fat, too, and as you know, in my office, we have that scale that measures your visceral fat. And my visceral fat was actually at nine, which is the upper limit of being okay, and that's not good for me. And so I wanted that definitely lower. And so it was a bit of a wake-up call, so I'm glad I did this. So um, that was like over the course of last year. I, I measured that stuff before I started the, this, this group. So how was my hunger? So in the past, like I said, I would have done more days of 24-hour fasting to kind of prepare my body a little bit and maybe eating, eating more healthy fats and things to kind of get my body in a fat-burning mode. But I just basically come off the, you know, it was like, uh, what was it, New Year's, New Year's Day, right? New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. So, of course, there was junk and everything else. So, hunger on the first day? Absolutely. Uh, normally, I do intermittent fasting anyway, so I don't eat until about like 2, 2.30 or 3 o'clock for my first meal. But that day, already around then, and even, you know, there was hunger pains were there. And then on the second day, it was even worse. <laughs> so, a lot during the course of the day. This day I was at home, this day I was at the office, and it, it's good to be busy when you're doing this kind of thing. So, you know, usually when I'm working with patients, if I'm busy and running around and stuff, I'm not even thinking about eating anyway. 
but uh, I think in the afternoon on this day, you know, I was holding a level two contact to one of my patients, and I heard my stomach really loud, like, rawr, 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 and it was, I said, give me some food, right? So that day was pretty hard for the hunger, and there's a lot of mental stuff with this. You're thinking, okay, should I go for it? Oh, maybe if I just have like a bone broth or something, and you, you got all this mental stuff going on, and you really just got to commit yourself to say, look, I'm just going to have water, and here it is. You know, you got your water with you, and that's all you do. Um, <clears throat> so there was less hunger on that day, because as the ketones start to get burned, you're, you get more uh, satiety, and your brain gets... You know, you're, you're not looking for food anymore. And then as it went on, like on the fourth day, basically, I was the whole day I was fine. And, you know, I was around food. I even went to a movie, popcorn and everything else. I just had my water bottle and that was it. And it was fine. Because usually that kind of stuff, all those stimulations. So a lot of this is just habit. Because, you know, usually at the end of my shift, I kind of would have one of my uh, bulletproof collagen bars before I go home and that kind of thing. And you're just kind of ready to do that habit. And it's a lot of that mental stuff. Uh, was I tired? A little bit tired, a couple of days. I'm a little bit tired today, actually, interestingly enough, but just not too bad. A lot of people get tired when they do this. Was I sore? Because when you get healing, a lot of times your body will go and try to heal stuff. First couple of days, no, and then I really started to get some pretty prominent low back discomfort and some discomfort into my legs and into my knees. And I had actually hurt my low back a little bit in the gym sort of thing about a week ago and it, it wasn't really quite correcting and I hadn't been able to get to my chiropractor, get network care yet or anything, so I was kind of trying to work it on my own, but I was always kind of pretty uncomfortable. Right now I'm paying attention to it and I don't feel that, that at all really. So my body was paying attention to that and really, and it was pretty uncomfortable. Sometimes at night it was hard for me to move and I, you know, I, I was thinking, well, should I put some uh, Tromil or some you know, cream on it? And I, I did one day a little bit at the end. Um, but overall that was kind of good and it's kind of dissipated now, I don't really feel it anymore. I didn't have any headaches, some people get headaches but I didn't have that at all during this thing. Uh, sometimes people get cramps and one important thing, when we do this fast, a, a, glass, a, a container of water like this, for those of you who see me in the office, you know, if I take a container of water like this, I always add some salt. And it's pretty important for a lot of people who might be prone to getting cramps that you should actually add salt. To your, um, to your water. For something like this, I would add about two shakes of water from the real salt, just about like that. So I do this all the time anyway, so I didn't get any cramps, but Janice in the office, she didn't know about that little detail, and uh, she told me, oh, I had a bad night last night, I had a lot of cramps, and I said, oh, you, you got to put salt in your water. <laughs> so she added the salt, and she didn't have cramps anymore. So just because a lot of electrolytes might be lost during the process, your body eliminating things, you might be losing the electrolytes through your, through your urine and that kind of stuff, so it's important to get the salt in there. So that was kind of important. Sleeping problems. Uh, very often when people have this, your body's kind of conserving your hormones, like your thyroid hormone, the, the active one. It usually starts to get down regulated a little bit to kind of conserve energy. So people might feel a little cold. I felt that a little bit on one night going to bed, but those were the nights where it was like minus 25 anyway, so I might have just been outside and the wind coming through the window, I'm not sure. Uh, one of the other things, I was uh, the only thing you, I, people are allowed to take is Restore because there's no nutritional, uh, it's not really pushing your body one way or the other. You don't want to take something that will stimulate or cause digestion, that kind of thing. This is just redox molecules of bacterial communication. And I was kind of doing this periodically every day, uh, building up to it, so just to make sure that when I do eat again, I'll have the right environment, the right bacteria can kind of reproliferate and that kind of thing. So like I said, I had gained seven pounds over the last year, and I actually lost that seven pounds in those five days, which is kind of cool. And I could actually see it physically in my belly a little bit, a little more definition, that kind of thing. So my ketones and my glucose. So my glucose on the first day was 85, and uh, my ketones were 1.4. If you're above 0.5 in your ketones, they basically see you're kind of burning, burning fat. <clears throat> and on most days when I'm intermittent fasting, it usually is 0.5, at least in around that range. But you want it a little bit more than that if you're going to be doing this thing. So the higher the ketones, the more your body's utilizing that fat for your energy source. So on the first day, my glucose was 85. On the second day, I went down to 81. And uh, I'm just using this with a special ketone meter like this. So this is a ketone meter. And then it has uh, ketone strips and glucose strips. So you just put in the strip. You, take, you do a little pin prick on the, on the finger. And you take the blood, and it gives you a reading. So if people can get things like this, Precision Extra at uh, Shoppers Drug Mart, that kind of thing, to check this out. So my, my glucose was going down, my ketones are going up, but at home I didn't have uh, the, the glucose strip, I just had the ketone ones, I was only able to measure those. So my ketones went from 1.4, 2.5, they went up to 5.6, even up to 6.8. I don't think I measured it on that day. Now today, after I've been eating for two days, it's gone down to 3.2. Still high, but I want to make sure I can keep that up for a little bit. 
Um, <clears throat> so my glucose was going down, and hopefully it went down even further, but I'm not really sure. Today it is back up again, because obviously I've been eating again, which is kind of normal. Well, by the way, so what did I eat? So when I uh, broke the fast, so like I said, we've kind of starved out all the bacteria. We want to re-inoculate them with good bacteria, right? So using, they talk about using fermented foods and that. Before I had actually had the meal, about two hours before I had the meal, um, I had something with this. It's called coconut meal, milk kefir. So this is uh, using coconut milk. She adds the bacterial culture to them. There's a, there's a nice lady in Ajax that makes these products. They're pretty, um, pretty smooth and creamy. They're in the health food stores. So I just added about two tablespoons of that. And I'm not a big fan of sour kind of stuff, so I added my monk fruit. So the monk fruit, the, they have liquid drops. I highly recommend you guys get these because you can put it in your purse or walk around with it and put it back back. And when you're going out to stores, if you're having teas or coffees, just a few drops of this and it sweetens it properly. So um, there's actually a vanilla flavor too. So we have a vanilla flavor, a lemon flavor. If you want to make like lemonades in the summer, that kind of thing. So you could use that to sweeten your lemonade. And then they also have a chocolate one that you can use for flavoring desserts and that kind of stuff. But uh, I put a few drops of this vanilla on the top of this because it's just pretty, you know, it's blank with a soury kind of taste because it's fermented. So I just stirred that in on the top and I had that and it made it like a nice vanilla yogurt feel to it. And so I did that about two hours before I had the meal. The first meal was just uh, some steamed organic vegetables with a little bit of coconut oil. I added some vegetable uh, broth to it. And then I had my uh, healthy unmashed on potatoes. The video that I did a few weeks ago where we used cauliflower as the base of your potatoes. I added some ghee, which is uh, clarified butter, which uh, ghee has a lot of what we call um, butyric acid in it or butyrate, which helps to feed the healthy bacteria in the lining of your intestine. So they're going to proliferate and kind of make the good lining there to help break down your foods and digest properly and give you a lot of benefits for that. So that was that meal. Next day, uh, so that was what I broke the fast with that on Saturday night. Sunday, I didn't. I did intermittent fasting again. So around two o'clock, I made a shake. So in the shake, I put in like you know spinach, kale, cor you know a bunch of greens. Blended them up with some coconut milk um, from the jar and uh, some blueberries, some vegan um, protein powder, and half a banana. And then, uh, <clears throat> and then in the evening, I had a a pastured egg omelette with some spinach again inside it and I had a little pecorino cheese from Italy thanks to one of my patients, uh, Grazia. She brought it over from Italy so it's a good block of pecorino cheese which is like sheep cheese which is really good and I had a little bit of that on it and I had some vegetables with uh, a half an avocado and that was the meal last night. So today I haven't eaten anything, it's like uh, 1.30, I'll go to the gym do some surge training and then I'll have a shake probably or maybe a salad depending on what I feel like doing and that'll be the first meal for this day and from now on I'll just be eating normally again which is this kind of thing basically. The biggest challenge is the mental game. If you push yourself, get over it and commit to it, you have an accountability with this thing, verbally say out loud that you're going to do it and I know you can do it. So I'm going to try to probably do this another time during the year at some point. We'll kind of organize it ourselves or if Dr. Pompa just kind of makes it another thing at some point, I'll try to give you all the guys some advanced warning and I'd recommend somebody if you're in fairly good general health and you don't have a lot of really drastic health problems, give this a shot and you'll actually see some pretty dramatic changes in your life and you'll see that you can do it too. So that's your health tip for this week. I know it was a little long. Hopefully you appreciated all the information and the personal aspect I put to it. And we'll see you next week. Bye.